This is a vintage Art Deco kind of triple faces compact vanity case. So it opens up and there's a little flip up mirror and that little action there. There's some original face powder in there. And it's got the maker's mark in here. And this was made by Richard Hudnut. And it's got a little hanging bale. And it's, a, it's an enamel and stainless steel piece. This one here has a little bit of damage to it, pretty worn out. I think it may be missing a piece in here. I think there might have been something else. Anyhow, this piece here I got at a walk around auction. I paid $5 for it and I sold it for $50 to someone in the UK. Here's some vintage or antique deskware. This is a porcelain moistener. So you would put some water down here, put this little roller in there, and then you could run your envelopes or stamps across the top and they would be evenly moistened for sealing. This here I picked up at a walk around auction. I It was a basically a tray or a box full of antique or vintage office supplies. I featured some of those pieces in my earlier videos. I believe I paid about $10 for that box or tray. And I've sold a lot of pieces for the, from that from about $20 to $40. So it's been a really great lot. That stuff always sells very well. This piece here sold for $24.95. So this is three boxes of Decora style outlet receptacles. And I got these in an auction lot, just kind of, kind of the extras. And I'd carried them around with me for a while because I was thinking I was going to use them in my house. When I moved into my new house, it needed to be rewired because I had old knob and tube wiring and I had to hire an electrician. I gave him these three boxes and he said, great. And then he took another look at them and said I couldn't use them because these are not tamper resistant. And my town electrical inspector requires tamper resistant outlets. So I decided to list these up, these three boxes and Sold them for $29. They've been online for quite a while. So this is an antique engraved copper wood block print or print block. It will focus there. It's a bear holding kind of a curious US flag and he's standing on what looks like a iceberg or an ice flow and there's water swirling, swirling all around him and just a really, really interesting piece. And I, I think it probably dates back to around the Civil War period. So when I first found this, I put it up at a really high price, like $600, just to make sure I wasn't going to leave any money on the table, that this wasn't some missing piece from some collection. And there it sat for quite a while. So recently I lowered the price down a couple times. Kept getting really low offers for it, $25, $60. Finally someone came in at $80 and I decided to kick it up to about $90 and they, they accepted, so it's been sold. This, this is what's called a first day cover or FDC. It's basically stamps that were mailed out on the first day that they were issued. So this one here was, these were issued on December 7th, 1943. So this is around the World War II era. If it was 1944, it would have been Pearl Harbor date and probably would be worth something. But this is a bunch of stamps of different, they're all US postage stamps. I have a lot of these first day covers. They're kind of like postcards and there's not a lot of money in them. I've been kind of dabbling them a little bit. I think this is the first one I put up and I put it up for 50 or I actually put it up for $20. Someone made an offer of 50 and I took it. A lot of them I see people selling for between two and three dollars and they post them just with a first class stamp so their shipping's really cheap, free shipping. This, I don't like going that low when selling stuff. It's really not worth my time. If it was a hobby, sure, but if I'm trying to pay the mortgage, it doesn't really pay the mortgage. This is my second set of genuine Dutch Holland hand carved clogs. I had two pairs of these. My wife found them on the side of the road for free and she thought I might want to sell them. So these have been up for about a year or so I think. And the first pair sold for around $30. The second pair sold for 27 bucks. This is a vintage Villaroy and Bach decorated porcelain pitcher. It's from Luxembourg. There's the mark on the bottom. I don't think it's terribly old. Oh, it has a date there. 1973. So it's about 40 three years old. So I guess it's classified as vintage, almost antique perhaps. And I got this at a really junky auction that's about two miles from my house. And they don't go very often and, and they just have really terrible stuff typically. But I, every once in a while in the summertime, I'm just looking for something to do on a Thursday night, I'll, I'll head out there. And I think this place will 
cl they clean out storage lockers or something like that because they just have a lot of stuff. It's really kind of like the flea markety kind of junk. And they sell it cheap. A lot of it, when you get it home, you realize it's chipped, it's been dropped, it's damaged. So I tend not to go there, but you can get stuff for cheap. And I got a few lots of porcelain stuff, and this was on it. And I probably paid no more than five bucks for the whole lot. This piece here, I had up, I think, for 30, and I took a best offer of 20 on it. This is a Canon battery magazine for a Canon SLR camera. When you put on the battery grip, you can put in the regular uh, double-way batteries into this and get some additional shots. And you guessed it, this came from the camera auction, which I bought several tables worth of stuff. And that stuff is continuing to sell. This piece here sold for $20. If you want to learn more about that stuff, you can look at some of my previous videos where I featured a lot more of it over the summer. This is a vintage Roseville Jardinier, two-handled kind of vase thing. It's got the name on the bottom there. And Roseville, along with Weller and some of the other kind of popular ceramics and pottery makers, I tend to stay away from because they're, they were pretty mass produced. Everybody is after the name at auctions. And so the prices tend to go a little bit too high. And this piece here, I probably should have stayed away from. It was on a tray. Somehow I got into the bidding a little bit too heavy and I ended up paying about 30 bucks for that tray lot. This piece here I had up for $59.95 and I sold it for $40. So I spent up for about six to eight months. There were a few other pieces in that lot, so it wasn't a complete wash. I should at least make a little bit of money on it, but just a reminder to myself to just stay away from Roseville. This is a book from 1911. It's Tom Swift and his wireless message. And a while ago I bought a bunch of children's literature books at auction. It was about two boxes full. It was probably about 50 or 60 books. I forget the price I paid for. It wasn't too much. And I listed those books up individually for about $18 to $25 a piece. They're not super desirable. They're kind of long tail and they take a little while to sell. But these, these books were all in pretty fair condition. And this one here sold for $18. There's a good market on eBay for vintage kitchenware. And so when I come across it, I tend to pick it up. So this here is vintage Drew Holland. It's enamel on cast iron. It says Made in Holland. It's a blue tulip design. And it's in really good shape. This is a really nice piece. And I didn't, I wasn't familiar with this brand until I came across it. I was, this I got at a walk around auction. It was in a box of old kitchen pots and pans. And there was about four pieces of yellow dance Coben style stuff, real mid-century. And that stuff will sell really well and really quickly. And when I got it home, I sold that stuff, listed that stuff and sold it. And then I had, was left over with these pieces. So I did some research and there is some money in these. They're a little bit slower to sell. This piece here sold for $35.95 and it's going off to California. So I'm in Massachusetts. It's going to cost an arm and a leg to ship this and I'm going to have to take my time to pack it up really well to make sure it arrives intact. Cast iron is kind of brittle. It's almost like a ceramic. So if it gets knocked around, it can crack. The enamel can chip. I've, the only other piece I've had break in the last couple years of shipping was a piece of this exact same pattern that I think got dropped too hard and ended up breaking the enamel off the back here.